Hi. Over the next uh, few days, if you hang with us, uh, I would like to just talk with you about marriage. And part of the reason for that is there are a few things in life that are probably more significant than finding the person that you will love and marry and then how that marriage lives over time. And I remember learning this in a lot of different ways, but one of the ways was I heard Bill McCartney once say, he was the founder of Promise Keepers years and years ago, he said that you can tell a lot about a man by the countenance of his wife. And I remember hearing that and thinking, oh, that can't be true. What if the wife just isn't uh, you know, a certain kind of person who's happy or something? But as I thought about it more and more, I realized that, that you really can tell a lot about a marriage, about people, by the countenance of their spouse. So you can tell a lot about a man uh, by the countenance of his wife, a lot about a woman by the countenance of her husband. And wherever you are, whether you're married or whether you're hoping to be married someday or maybe you're just happy right where you are, having the kind of marriage that, that, that you would long for will make a huge difference in your life. And even beyond that, you know, it's interesting to me at least how much time and energy we'll spend in our culture when it comes to things like physical fitness or academic achievement or career advancement. And yet we get married and assume that we know everything we need to know about marriage. And as a pastor, one of the things that I've seen is, is when couples come to get married, often they just say, you know, it's uh, great that we're getting married, we're good, and we don't really need a whole lot. And yet a lot of times then I'll see couples toward the end of marriage, and it'll be amazing how hard their marriage will be. And so what I'd like to do is just show you a, a verse in the Bible that's repeated. In fact, in, in the entire Bible with so many verses that, that have to do with different things uh, about different important topics, there are not a lot of topic or a lot of verses about marriage, but there's one verse that's repeated five different times. It starts in Genesis 2, and then it's repeated in the Gospels. It's repeated in, in different places. And the verse is basically this. I'll read it from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. It says this. It says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And what I'd like to do today is just begin talking about some failures in marriage, and then uh, over the next coming days, some of the other failures. And today, we'll just focus on this word leave. And the word leave, uh, I think, points to one of the failures in marriage, and that is a failure to cut the cord. And I use cut the cord here, obviously, as an allusion to the umbilical cord, but it's amazing to me how many times people will be financially, emotionally, physically dependent on their parents, even when they're married, but, but, but even more than that, when they'll be emotionally still dependent on their parents. And they'll be in a place where they're consistently coming back to mom and dad, and, and they don't establish a new priority or a new home in any substantial way. And, and it's important in marriage that your spouse doesn't have to compete for your attention. I remember reading this in a little book called Letters to Philip. When I was first married, uh, he talked about, uh, there were letters to his son who was about to get married. And he said to his son, he said, when you're married, he said, I want you when your mother and I come to visit you to walk right past your mother, right past me, and go kiss your wife. And he said, because it's, it's symbolic that she's now the new priority, a bigger priority than your mother or I will ever be again. And I remember when I heard that, just thinking, oh, that's kind of goofy. And then I got married, and my parents would come visit, my wife's parents would come visit, and, and, and that little thought stuck in my mind, and I would walk right past my own mother to kiss my wife when I would get home. And, and it's a, just a little symbolic way of saying, you are the new priority. And, and what this means in terms of, of a relationship is that we consistently find ways to, to, to make ourselves make our spouse the bigger priority than anything else in our lives. And clearly this text is talking about your family of origin, but I think it would be fair to say that, that we need to make our spouse a bigger priority than our past, than other people, than our hobbies, than our career. In fact, you probably won't have a very strong marriage if your marriage and your spouse is always competing with something else in your life. What you'll have instead is you'll have a marriage that's consistently fighting for attention, consistently demanding something from you that you'll resent giving. And the way that this works is in part by saying, I'll make this a priority and you can 
come up with the list of activities, things like date night and having uh, you know, a no text or phone rule at a certain time of night or all these kinds of things. And those things are helpful, but they're not the ultimate thing that's helpful. Because what they do is they give you techniques to try to manage something in your life when what probably you need more than anything is to have a sense of the ultimacy of Jesus Christ because when you have an ultimacy of Jesus Christ then what happens is he's your ultimate priority and instead of demanding something from your spouse that, that your spouse can never give you what you'll do instead is you'll be able to give to your spouse the priority and place that they deserve because you have your priorities now in a very different way in a way that that really allows you to to give yourself fully to your spouse and to do that, what you'll have to do is come to grips with the fact that your life will never be just the way you want it, but instead that Christ is redeeming you and is preparing you for what is ultimate. And when you do that, then you'll be able to cut the cord in a way that you'll be able to say, now I will allow this marriage to be the priority, this marriage to be my, my home, my life, because I have a greater home. And so I don't have to fight between different things in this world. So you can make a big mistake in marriage just by failing to cut the cord, by not leaving your family of origin or any of the other activities, hobbies, career that you have in your life.